Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to draw the Eiffel Tower and uh, a little light uh, pole in front. And what I did is actually I've drawn uh, Paris from my imagination, and I'm going to use uh, watercolor to uh, color my drawing in. And actually, uh, here in front is a, uh, a light bulb, kind of a, a lantern, and it's uh, attached to a railing. And I made a very, very quick sketch with uh, a pencil to get the idea of my composition. And what I've done is I've placed the uh, Eiffel Tower next to the water which is actually not the case, of course. But I wanted to, to draw the Eiffel Tower in the reflection of water. And as an artist, you can do as you please. So I'm simply doing this. And also there's a bridge that is uh, crossing uh, the water. And as you can see, the lines in my composition are all going towards that uh, Eiffel Tower which is my main object in this uh, drawing and that Eiffel Tower is uh, reflected into the water and the the lantern in front is um, well uh, kind of well duplicating that Eiffel Tower and is giving this a great composition To go over my drawing that I've set up with the pencil, I'm using a Stettler fine liner. And you can use any fine liner you want, but make sure that the fine liner that you use will not dissolve with water. So make a quick uh, test before you start using the fine liner of your choice. Once you have uh, the main lines standing like you want them in your drawing, you can start coloring in with the watercolor. For the setup, I'm uh, using a uh, dark blue, so I've simply uh, mixed black and blue together. And by this way, I can already decide where the dark shadows are. Here in front, where the lantern is, I will uh, want to be the colors to be the darkest uh, as possible. And also here on the, underneath those, those arches of the bridge, uh, I want a lot of shadow, but I'm careful not to, to color it in all dark blue, so I leave spaces open. For the trees around the Eiffel Tower, I am using some green and some burnt sienna which is a, a very dark brown and uh, because you I'm using quite a lot of water those pigments will keep uh, well mixing together as they stand on the paper and the water is slowly uh, soaked in uh, in the paper and the pigments will keep uh, well blending in together so I simply well, paint uh, quite quickly and then I will just see how those pigments will uh, work together here I'm using a little bit of yellow ochre and it's in the railing in front and on one rooftop and also here a little bit in the trees and a little bit in the background and 
the farther away, uh, say in the far distance, I'm using as less detail as possible. Now I then I uh, have to wait a little bit. So now I will start uh, putting in some blue for the sky. In the meanwhile, the rest of the drawing can start to dry a little bit. And here I'm using a lot of water and some light blue and some dark blue. I will just have it sit there. You can see it soaking in to the paper. And here on the right side I've used a lot of water again and I'm simply putting in a little bit of green and while I have that soak in I simply move to the front of the drawing again and put in some extra dark for that railing and the lantern You can always uh, lift something a little bit up. So when you go in too dark, you put up a little bit water and then you uh, can lift up the pigments again. And for the Eiffel Tower, I'm using a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of black for the underlay of my Eiffel Tower. Also here on the basic of the drawing, kind of uh, like the horizon, I put in a lot of dark shadows. Here I'm in the front working again and in the meantime uh, the sky is kind of drying and here I'm pulling it down a little bit to get some far distance clouds going on. And here I am picking up the green and well dragging it down a little bit and just see what that does in the meantime I want a little bit of more blue in the water like it's the re reflection of the sky that is uh, hitting the water And here at the basic of the Eiffel Tower, I want the really darkest, darkest shadows. I also put that in for the basic of the houses that are, well, kind of in the mid. And by that way, I, I get a firm basic also here on the edge of the water and underneath the arches of the bridge now if you think you are going in too dark you can always put a little bit of water on your uh, watercolors and then lift it up with a tissue now I'm working on the front again in the meantime, I let, I'm letting the sky dry a little bit. And then, in the, well, as you are um, doing this, you will, you will notice when, um, the, when the, the paint is, is dry enough to uh, go over it again. You can actually see it. For instance here now I can go over with a little bit of a red should you do that when the paper is still too wet your red will uh, fade away so I simply have to keep painting and keep shifting around and watching the paper and how dry it is and if I can go over it again Here I'm going over the part of the sky and I want the left side to get a little bit more color. 
So I'm picking up a little bit of purple and I'm dragging that down. So I get a somewhat more atmospheric dimension. I will let that soak in and in the meantime I can work on the right side again which is now dry enough and mm, when I'm not too happy or I want a little bit of more light I can put up on a little bit of water and then simply uh, lift it up with a tissue if I want I have uh, let my painting dry now and once you've done that you can take a white uh, watercolor pencil or if you have it a white gel pen now if you really really want it to uh, stay a painting you do not have to go in there with a, a pen anymore but I want it to demonstrate that it can be great fun to put in a little bit of texture with some white gel pen for instance here I am applying it on the Eiffel Tower itself and on purpose I've made this Eiffel Tower quite dark so I can go over this with uh, the white gel pen I also apply uh, the white pen to uh, the, the lantern that's in front and also on the railing itself. So I'm actually drawing in structure over my watercolor and in this way it's, it's uh, becoming a mixed media. And you can put in a lot of detail if you want once you are at this stage what you can also do is go back to your um, uh, fine liner and also get in the darkest of darks by um, uh, rendering in some dark lines I love it because uh, in, this way, in this way I get a, a great um, feel of atmospheric uh, perspective because I'm putting in a lot of detail in that railing and in that way it really stands out from the far distance for the houses for instance. Here I'm drawing in some uh, really rough stones on the bridge and once again this is not an accurate view of Paris at all I just made it up and I'm simply practicing with watercolors and mixed medium and see what that does it's just great fun and uh, as an artist you can draw in anything you want even if it's not possible at all just just do it and just well be an explorer and just draw whatever you want as long as you have fun it's always okay here I'm using the fine liner uh, for the texture in that uh, Eiffel Tower it's such a nice building and it was once built for an exposition to be broken down again but because everybody liked it so much it now is a monument and uh, it is a magnificent building
Here I'm putting in a little bit of detail around the Eiffel Tower and some darkest shadows to make it pop out. And of course for uh, the lantern in front. I want uh, some dark edges and it has to pop out also. It's just so much fun to do. Well, I hope you will give this a try and, and make your own version of your view of uh, Paris and the Eiffel Tower. I hope you will give it a big thumbs up and uh, well, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you again in my next tutorial.